In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your your spirit. I welcome you all to the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy. As we begin this sacred Mass, let us contemplate these words of St. John Paul II. Christ, the living bread that has come down from heaven, is the only one who can satisfy the hunger of mankind in every time and place on earth. But he does not wish to do that in the same way he multiplied the loaves with the help of the disciples. The prodigious miracle is but an image of the much greater mystery of love that is renewed daily in the Holy Mass. Through his ordained ministers, Christ surrenders his body and blood for the life of mankind. And all who worthily nourish themselves at this table become living instruments of his presence in love, mercy, and peace. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days, when by your gift we have known it more fully, so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading as Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you about whom is the prophet saying this? 
about himself or about someone else. Then Philip opened his mouth and, and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop. And Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Astos and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Bless our God, you peoples, loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now all you who fear God while I, de while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God who refused me not, my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Let us rejoice then and give thanks that we have become not only Christians, but Christ himself. Do you understand and grasp, brethren, God's grace towards us? Marvel and rejoice, we have become Christ. For if he is the head, we are the members. 
He and we together are the whole man. The fullness of Christ then is the head and the members. But what does head and members mean? Christ and the church. On this Thursday of the third week of Easter, we contemplate these words of St. Augustine as they relate to the words of Christ in the gospel passage today. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent him draw, me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. Thus we require the grace of God not only that we approach him, but also that we become members of the body of Christ. We are incorporated into the body of Christ through him who is God, the living bread that came down from heaven. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI speaks of this living bread within a teaching on Peter the Apostle. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still die, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Then many of his disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Jesus gives his flesh. What does this mean? Even for the disciples, what Jesus says in this moment seems unacceptable. It was and is for our heart, for our mentality, a hard saying, a trial of faith. And having heard this, many of the disciples went away. They wanted someone who would renew the state of Israel and not one who said, I give my flesh. We can imagine then, the words of Jesus were difficult for Peter too, who at Caesarea Philippi protested at the prophecy of the cross. However, when Jesus asked the 12, will you also go away? Peter reacted with the enthusiasm of his generous heart, guided by the Holy Spirit. Speaking on everyone's behalf, he answered with the immortal words which are also our words. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Here, like at Caesarea, Peter begins his words with the confession of the church's Christological faith and becomes a spokesman for the other apostles and believers of all times. This does not mean that he had understood the mystery of Christ in all its depth. Its faith was still, his faith is, was still at the beginning of a journey of faith. It would reach its true fullness only through the experience of the Paschal events. Nonetheless, it was already faith open to the greatest reality open especially because it was not faith in something, it was faith in someone, in him, Christ himself. And so our faith too is always an initial one, and we also have to carry out a great journey. But it is essential that it be an open faith, and that we allow ourselves to be led by Jesus, because he does not only know the way, but he is the way. Peter's rash generosity does not protect him from the risks connected with his human weakness. Moreover, it is what we too can recognize within our own lives. Peter followed Jesus with enthusiasm. He overcame the trial of faith, abandoning himself to Christ. The moment comes, however, when he gives into fear and falls. He betrays the master. The school of faith is not a triumphal march, but a journey marked daily by suffering and love.
trials and faithfulness. Peter, who promised absolute fidelity, knew the bitterness of humiliation of denial. The arrogant man learns the costly lesson of humility. Peter, too, must learn that he is weak and in need of forgiveness. Once Peter's attitude changes and he understands the truth of his weak heart, of a believing sinner, he weeps in a fit of liberating repentance. After this weeping, he is finally ready for his mission. On a spring morning, this mission will be entrusted to him by the risen Christ. The encounter takes place on the shore of the Lake of Tiberias. John the Evangelist recounts the conversation between Jesus and Peter in that circumstance. And there is a significant play on words. In Greek, the word philio means the love of friendship, tender but not all-encompassing. Instead, the word agapo means love, without reserve, total and unconditional. Jesus asks Peter the first time, Simon, do you love me? Agapos me. With this total and unconditional love. Prior to the experience of betrayal, the apostle certainly would have said, I love you, agapo say, unconditionally. Now that he has known the bitter sadness of infidelity, the drama of his own weakness, he says with all humility, Lord, you know that I love you, philo say. That is, I love you with my poor human love. Christ insists, Simon, do you love me with this total love that I want? And Peter repeats the response of his humble human love. Kyrie philose. Lord, I love you as I am able to love you. The third time, Jesus only says to Simon, Philes me, do you love me? Simon understands that his poor love is enough for Jesus. It is the only one of which he is capable. Nonetheless, he is grieved that the Lord spoke to him in this way. He thus replies, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you, Philo say. This is to say that Jesus has placed himself on the level of Peter rather than Peter exalting himself to the level of Christ. It is exactly this divine conformity that gives hope to the disciple who experience the pain of infidelity. From here is born the trust that makes him able to follow Christ to the end. This he said to show by what death he was to glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. From that day, Peter followed the master with precise awareness of his own fragility. But this understanding did not discourage him. Indeed, he knew that he could count on the presence of the risen one beside him. Here we must understand. God's grace is imparted to us when we receive the living bread in faith, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we receive the Eucharist with a worthy and open heart, we are incorporated into the body of Christ. And in all truth, through this sacrament of sacraments, we are assured of and can depend upon the real presence of the risen one, as affirmed in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. The mode of Christ's presence under the Eucharistic species is unique. In the most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist, the body and blood together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore the whole Christ, is truly, really, and substantially contained. This presence is called real, which is not intended to exclude the other types of presence as if they could not be real too, but because it is presence in the fullest sense that is to say, it is a substantial presence by which Christ, God, and man 
makes himself holy and entirely present. This presence has both the power to assimilate and transform us, not only into members of the body of Christ, but also heirs to the inheritance, eternal life with him forever in heaven. Enter the temple gates with praise, its courts with thanksgiving. Give thanks to God, bless his name. Good indeed is the Lord whose love endures forever, whose faithfulness lasts through every age. With unwavering trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we offer up our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For all the members of the church, may God bless us and purify our hearts for the coming of the fullness of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world, may a spirit of goodwill bring forth understanding, reconciliation, and healing among all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who experience hunger or malnutrition, may the Lord sustain them in hope and help them secure the sustenance they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For those newly initiated into the church, may the Lord continue to instruct them in his ways and lead them on the path of righteousness so they may be a light for others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may the Lord have mercy on them and welcome them into the banquet of his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all those who call a right to us, may the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the silent intentions that we carry upon our own hearts, and for all the souls in purgatory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, you wash away our sins in water and give us new birth in the Spirit. As we continue to celebrate Christ's resurrection, increase our awareness of these blessings and renew your gift of life within us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion and thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. From the Diary of St. Faustina, entry 1535. O oh Jesus, I am locking myself in your most merciful heart as in a fortress, impre impregnable against the missiles of my enemies.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you all for joining us for the sacred mass. There is one announcement. There will be First Friday adoration and a talk tomorrow at 8 p.m. There will be a First Saturday talk and devotion beginning at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Both may be attended in person at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy or viewed via live streaming. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in God. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Prayer during an epidemic. Lord Jesus, hear our pleas, our good shepherd and divine physician. We implore your mercy in the wake of an outbreak of serious illness and disease. Guide our efforts to prevent contagion and make preparations to care for those most vulnerable. Assist all professionals and volunteers who work to eradicate the epidemic now spreading. May our actions be marked by your steadfast love and selfless service and never by panic or fear. Bestow your comfort and healing to the sick. Sustain and strengthen them by your grace. May they know your closeness as they carry the cross of illness. And may all you have called from this life come to worship you eternally with all the saints as you grant consolation and peace to their mourners. Amen. Holy Mary, health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph, hope of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Rocco, protector against epidemics. Father Chris Alar, and it's a joy to announce that I'll be back at the National Shrine at uh, for First Fridays and First Saturdays this weekend, uh, May 6th, Friday night at 8 p.m., and May 7th, Saturday morning at 11 a.m., that I invite you to join us in person as we'll be doing the First Friday devotions, as well as on Saturday, a talk on Marian apparitions, followed by the first Saturday devotions. So again, please join us live at the Shrine. If you cannot be here, please join us live on our YouTube channel and Facebook pages, YouTube Divine Mercy and our Facebook page, Divine Mercy Official. Thank you, God bless you, and please join us for these very important devotions.